Well, how are you doing? <clears throat> okay. This video is going to be titled The End of Dielectric Acceleration. Uh, we all know who this is directed to. I'm not going to name any names. <clears throat> uh, there's a lot of claims connected to um, this uh, dielectric acceleration. It has never been shown to exist. It has never been proven through scientific method, etc., etc. There is one main person that, when I say it, we all know who this is uh, directed towards, uh, it's directed towards one main person who is the head of a team of people. We all know who that is. <clears throat> a very dishonest person. Um, <clears throat> I hope there's no spelling mistakes in here. Um, um, I went through it, I didn't see him, but I could have missed him. <clears throat> but either way, I'll get on with it. Okay, the end of dielectric acceleration. Sorry, just before I start, there's going to be, uh, this is all reading as I go through each topic one by one. So hopefully it won't be too long, uh, but it is all reading. <clears throat> so you can listen without, uh, without, without needing to see the screen. Okay, <clears throat> the end of dielectric acceler <coughs> acceleration. So I'll start again. The end of dielectric acceleration. There is a positive claim out there that dielectric acceleration is a reality. The claim is that electrostatic forces create a downward bias for all matter, solids, liquids, gases and plasmas, and that this claimed downward bias is a set downward direction for all matter to follow towards the Earth's surface. But there are some serious flaws with this claim. <clears throat> Firstly, there is no downward bias, something that is even admitted to by heliocentrism. What I mean by that is even heliocentrism had to accept that, uh, uh, that Archimedes principle uh, um, was a reality. So even they had to accept that there was not a downward bias to everything. <clears throat> Second, the list of proofs for the electrostatic force that is claimed to be creating this downward bias is erroneous and under-researched by those who punt this electrostatic claim, as they latch on to anything that may support their electrostatic beliefs without proper scrutiny. Third, and definitely most importantly, <clears throat> to people who are promoting such a cause and effect relationship between matter and this claimed electrostatic force as forces cause effects, have not proven their claims via scientific, scientific method, and nor will they outline the details of their hypothesis, uh, but instead prefer to claim generated effects that are generated within, within man-made devices, effects that are not observed in this same or even similar manner within reality. I will now list their claimed proofs and show how they are all flawed. <clears throat> okay, proof one, the Van de Graaff generator. This item is a device that creates a buildup of electrostatic charge. And when very small objects are placed inside it, they will be found to levitate, i.e. very small shards of metal, pieces of paper and human hairs, are some of the items used to display what the electrostatic charge is causing. The generator is claimed to be a particle accelerator. The claim. The claim from those who push dielectric acceleration is that the generator is reversing the polarity of up and down, which is why these items are levitating. The truth. The truth is that there is no downward bias factor to be reversed. Everything falls or rises due to its relative density, in accordance with the density of the medium it resides in. Water is more dense than air, so wood will float on water until the air inside the wood is replaced by water, and then it will sink. But wood will always sink in air, regardless of what's inside it. Secondly, the Van de Graaff generator is only causing a levitation of these tiny items and not reversing any claim polarity. It also can only cause very minute items to levitate. And levitation is a very different thing to items falling up to your ceiling as fast as they fall to your floor. See, you, the diff, if you are reversing a polarity, then when you drop your phone, then it will go up to your ceiling. It wouldn't be able to drop and go down. That's the reversing of polarity not a levitation. <clears throat> if the Van de Graaff generator was actually reversing some downward polarity bias, then the items should stick to the roof of whatever container they are in and not just levitate. As I can take a balloon and fill half of it with helium and fill the other half with air, and that balloon will sit stationary between my ceiling and my floor, does that mean that I have reversed the polarity of down? No, it means that I have used the density of the gases to create an equilibrium. The weakest point of the dielectric acceleration argument, argument is that those who punt it must believe that there is such a thing as a downward bias factor in reality. This is a begging the question log logical fallacy. The requirement of this assumed and needed downward bias factor is what kills the dielectric acceleration argument. 
All one needs to do to disprove the claim down what bias factor is boil a kettle of water and watch the steam rise. <coughs> Proof two. A claim measurement of an increase in static charge as you rise upwards into the sky that is measured for 60 miles high. This is an interesting claim, as it may very well be true that there is an increase in static charge as you rise upwards, but it really doesn't matter if there is or not. The reason that it doesn't matter is, <clears throat> first, the claim is that as something rise, rises upwards, it is more likely to be brought down at an accelerated rate in accordance with Charles Vernon Boy's 1896 9.81 MS2 equation. Boy's equation states that an object falling will fall at the accelerate, accelerated rate of 9.81 meters per second squared. But Boy's equation is based on the pre-assumption of a vacuum and not meant as a yardstick for objects falling through air or any other medium. Moreover, Boy's equation is just that, an equation, and not a measurement. Of a, so any claim concerning a matching fall rate of objects through air or any other medium must be false as Boy's equation is based solely in a vacuum. Second, an object's uh, fall rate would have to slow down as, appro as it approaches, uh, sorry, sorry, I start that again. Second, an object's fall rate would have to slow down as it approached the ground, as the static charge that is claimed to be causing this fall rate is decreasing towards the ground. And objects actually do this, but due to an increase in air density and not a decrease in static charge. Third, the highest a high altitude balloon can rise to is around 30 to 36 miles up into the sky. And there is nothing else other than NASA style sounding rockets that can take measurements. And these sounding rockets are claimed to leave a globe out and travel out into heliocentric space, and then send back a pod of data, something that violates the natural laws we term as entropy. So in what way were these static charge measurements taken? If they can span upwards to 60 miles, when a high altitude balloon can't hardly get past 36 miles. Fourth, <clears throat> for this claim of dielectric acceleration to be true, the sky must have a constant opposite charge to the Earth. So, if the Earth is negative and the sky must be, uh, then the sky must be positive. And this is actually a claim from those who promote dielectric acceleration. If there was or is a constant negative charge to the Earth, while simultaneously the sky held a constant positive charge, then technically I should be able to harness this force and cause a magnet to levitate by just turning its negative side upwards. This should have a double effect as the negative side is being attracted to the positive sky while the positive side is being attracted to the negative earth. But then, technically, then all standing mag magnets should always be levitating. Explain. What I mean by this is it doesn't matter what way you turn it because if I turn the positive side to the positive sky, let's just say, then there'll be a repelling force. But there will be an equal repelling force with the negative side then is, that is also turned to the negative ground. If the, if, if the sky was positive and the, the earth was negative. So did, we should be able to show the levitation um, of all it, at all times. No, there was any um, need for a laboratory or anything else. We should at all times be able to, able to show the constant levitation of standing magnets. You know, because there's a positive and negative to a magnet. So, but we don't say that because it's, it's not true. Three, spider ballooning. <clears throat> there was a phenomenon known as spider ballooning where tiny little spiders appear to be flying, so much so that they have even supposedly been seen out to sea by mariners. Those who promote who promote dielectric accelerate uh, sorry, those who promote dielectric acceleration claim as have you uh, sorry, those who promote dielectric acceleration claim as have universities universities that this phenomenon is due to the spiders taking advantage of the static charge in the air. It has been taught that they are creating a type of ionic wind, which is something that also involves air pressure, as it's a wind that is created by charged ions causing a movement within the air. <clears throat> but there are two schools of thought on this phenomenon, but people who promote dielectric acceleration only promote or learn of one. It was noticed that, noticed that these spiders were doing this in the mornings when the sun was rising, plus the breed of spiders that do this can only perform this up until adolescent age, as after afterwards they become too dense and heavy. These are important points, as it has been taught that these spiders are actually only taking advantage of convection currents, as convection currents are caused by the heating of the air at ground level, which changes the air's density and causes it to expand and rise, and when it cools it flows downward again to be heated once more. Technically, technically, convection is described as an input of kinetic energy into a medium, heat, 
which causes an expansion of that medium and by proxy, by proxy, sorry, by proxy a lowering of the medium's density per foot cubed. And when that medium has its kinetic energy extracted cold, the medium contracts again and by proxy causes a raising of the medium's density per foot cubed. So as these tiny spiders are, are seen to perform this ability in the mornings, in greenhouses and warm weather, it was assumed that they were just using convection currents. So Bristol University set up a demonstration where they placed these young spiders in a sealed tank. They sealed the tank from all outside drafts and currents and then added electric charge and the spiders started to raise up in the tank, which gave them the impression that this phenomenon really was due to static charge in the air. But, this is the big but, they forgot one thing, and that is that they added electric charge to the tank. And what does electric charge do? Right? It creates heat. So the electric charge that was being added to the tank was causing the air that was that, that was in the tank to warm up, which in turn caused uh, convection currents. As when they turned off the charge, the spoilers would stop, but so would the convection currents. So this phenomenon is caused by relative density and not static charge. So this is very important because when these when they added the electric charge to the tank, right, what that did was <coughs> was that it caused the tank to heat, which then caused the air, they had to have air in it <coughs> for the spiders to live. So it caused the air inside of it to then start heat up and to start moving around and start to, to rise, warm air. And why does it rise? It expands and it loses, its, it changes its density. So what's, this is actually a proof of relative density and has nothing to do with uh, dielectric acceleration or static or static charge, because electric charge will create heat. That's what it does. It'll do that at all times, because you're adding energy, uh, as they say, to the tank. So there's no way around that. So this is a proof of relative density, especially because it's only the smallest of spoilers, uh, the adolescent uh, and below uh, age spoilers that of this uh, of these breeds or whatever that can do this. Because a lot, what the what uh, convection will also do is bring up a lot of dust and stuff up into the air, and that's why when it rains, often the time rainwater has uh, dust and uh, little particles of this and that in it, and that's due to it being brought up to uh, what's known as the air boundary layer, and that's where clouds form, and then when the cloud, when the uh, <clears throat> when enough of the uh, water vapor con condenses, and it starts to rain, uh, the dust that's been brought up comes back down so these tiny spiders are only probably i don't know what, what weight they are but they're probably only the weight of a few bits of dust depends on i don't know how big they are but the point is that the convection currents could easily do it especially uh if they're close to a uh, surface of earth where there's more heat so the uh, a greatest amount of rising will be happening there if you understand what i mean like <clears throat> there's more air obviously so that is that's it it's a proof of relative density and not a proof of dielectric acceleration or anything else it's just logic four bumblebees and beetles it has been claimed by those who promote dielectric acceleration that bumblebees and beetles are using the static charge that is in the air to fly now it has long been claimed that bumblebees should not be able to fly due to their aerodynamic shape which is obviously one of the most stupid statements ever as bumblebees do fly i always could never understand why someone would make that statement but i remember it being made back in the 1980s and forever i remember that being made people literally saying that it, if they're not it, they shouldn't be able to fly well, obviously that's wrong they do fly so they should be able but they don't use static charge they use the lift effect as do beetles and all things natural and man-made as there is only one way to fly and that is via the lift effect the lift effect, also known as Bernoulli's principle, is an effect that is caused due to the principles of entropy. It is an exchange of high pressure and low pressure. <clears throat> high pressure always strives to go to low pressure, and all wings create high pressure, slow-moving air underneath, and low pressure, fast-moving air on top, and this allows for flight. Bumblebees use this very effect, uh, but they do it in such a way that it seems abnormal, but this is due to the muscles in their chest and shoulders. Bumblebees' chest and shoulder muscles work kind of like an elastic band, as when they pull back their wings, it stretches their chest muscles, which causes an effect of an, electric, an elastic band pulling back together. But then the same happens with the shoulders. <clears throat> this causes the effect of a kind of an induced perpetual motion, where the chest pulls down uh, the wings due to being expanded, and the shoulders pull back the wings due to a similar expansion. Uh, 
there is a little bit more than just this taking place as the angle of the wings and the direction of the motion are also important but this exchange between the chest and the shoulders uh, create a high pressure below the wings and a low pressure above the wings which allows the bumblebees to fly beetles also uh, sorry, sorry be beetles although obviously not the same as bumblebees also take advantage of the lift effect but they often fly with their legs outstretched to induce drag as it helps them maneuver in the air five and, and final ionic wind there has been some demonstrations performed by a type of glider that uses what is called ionic wind where it takes advantage of static charge an electric field causes charged molecules in the air to accelerate and move. These charged molecules collide with non, uh, sorry, with neutral non-charged molecules, which causes a movement of air. This is known as an ionic wind, and they have tried testing this as a mode of flight. And although it is interesting, it only works with very light unmanned aircraft so far. So ionic wind is not a proof of anything. It, yes, they are using uh, charged, uh, charged. Ion, uh, ions uh, as they as they describe them they're using electric charge that is that is uh, that is being uh, excited through uh, the input of an electric field uh, sorry static charge that's being excited through the input of an electric an electric field um, and yes they have shown I think it was in the MIT they have shown uh, uh, unmanned aircraft flying across a like say a large room or whatever but that's as far as they've gotten with it, as far as I know so far. And the they are, I don't think they can actually put it into any kind of commercial use, certainly not at the moment, uh, because that might be as much as they can do with it. Because it might be only they might be only able to do that with it. So uh, I don't know. I don't think that's a proof of anything, but it has been mentioned uh, by people who have who have claimed that dielectric acceleration is real. There is no downward bias. Dielectric acceleration is made up by and I'm going to say his name now, a man, a man named Bob Nodell, who is a very dishonest man. Um, and he is the head of a group called Globusters. Um, and he has been pushing this and pushing this and pushing this uh, for several years now. And he has been challenged on it. And all he has done is, is uh, responded with personal attack. Um, so <clears throat> the man is obviously wrong. Uh, as I demonstrate here, anyone can look into what I've said here and they can prove it true for themselves. Um, dielectric acceleration does not exist, nor there is there a need for it to exist. Static charge exists. Yeah, that's fine. I don't mind. Um, but the reason why things fall or rise is purely down to uh, um, the density of the object uh, or substance um, in accordance with the density of the medium it resides in. You know something that is proven has been proven and can be proven at any time through scientific method thanks for watching